Welcome to the presentation of a lecture from Gnostic Radio, a free public service from the Gnostic tradition of Samael Aun Beor. Gnosis is the root wisdom of the world's greatest knowledge. Gnosis is a universal teaching of practical science, whose goal is absolute liberation from suffering and the complete development of the human being. This lecture is one of hundreds available as free downloads, podcasts, or transcriptions. Our lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures to find teachings that suit you. Twice a month, Gnostic Radio broadcasts live and includes a free online classroom allowing listeners to see images, read related scriptures, and ask questions of the speaker. To learn how to participate, visit GnosticRadio.org. Gnostic Radio is a service of Glorianne Publishing, a non-profit organization. The lectures and radio broadcasts have been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. To make a donation, visit GnosticRadio.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. Gnostic Mysteries Christus Lucifer In the book of Revelation chapter 2 verse 26 and 28 we read, we read He that overcomes and keeps my works unto the end to him will I give power over the nations, and I will give him the morning star. If you look at the first graphic of this uh, PDF, you will find the Greek cross interrelated with the tree of life. And also, a beautiful graphic of Lucifer throwing arrows through the world. So, this lecture will explain what uh, Christ and Lucifer means in Gnosticism in accordance, of course, with the scriptures that we find in the Bible. If you see uh, beneath the graphic, we wrote the word goim in Hebrew. That is always translated in the Bible as nations. The singular for goim is goy, which usually is given to those who are not Jewish, Jews. Of course, we agree with it, but from the esoteric, alchemical, Kabbalistic point of view. Because if you take the word goy backwards, you uh, pronounce ego. And really, this word is precisely what uh, has to be uh, understood by it. Ego, or egos, goim. Because in reality, all the people of the earth, including the state of Israel, have ego within. 
And that ego is precisely what the Bible refers a goyim. Or nations. Because obviously with all the people with ego, we form towns, nations, countries. So this statement is of course addressing the people with ego. Or those egos that we had to control with the power of Lucifer. Between parentheses, when we study, according to the Zohar, the staff of Moses, it is stated there that it also represents the tempter that the Bible calls Satan. But really, uh, Isaiah, in the chapter 14 of his book, He refers as Lucifer, I mean the Bible translates this word Hillel, Ben Shahar, as Lucifer. Lucifer, of course, is a Latin word, which relates to the light. Luci is light, and fair means carrier. From that word fair comes the word in English fairy. So when you said Lucifer, you are addressing the carrier of the light, which is, of course, something very profound to understand is not addressing, as people uh, think, certain personage or angel that fell from heaven and that is controlling all the nations of the earth. Because as we stated, or I was stating, The staff of Moses represents precisely that serpent or tempter that gave all of the plagues to the people of the earth, which is symbolized by Egypt. And that we had to comprehend at Mizrahim in Hebrew. So in the right graphic, of this first uh, page of the PDF, you find again Christ crucified in the tree of life. And uh, in the first triangle of the tree of life, you find the three letters of the Tetragrammaton, the sacred name of God, yod Hey vav And the last He of the Tetragrammaton plays in the Ein Sof. As we uh, always mentioned, in order to show you how this yod Hey vav He is related with the light. Because Ein Sof Or means the limitless light. And Lucifer is light or carrier of the light. Sometimes we state that this carrier is fire. And it's precisely very uh, logical to see that the carrier of the light is the fire. Fire and light, light and fire is the same. That's why we also can translate Lucifer as light and fire. And of course, when we are addressing this, we are addressing the first triangle plus the last letter of the Tetragrammaton in order to form the sacred name of God in Kabbalah. It is something also very remarkable to see 
that the tetragrammaton, the holy name of God, which is yod Hey vav Hey, is also hidden in the word Yehuda, which in many lectures we explained is related with a solar light. Yehuda, if you add uh, before the last He of the Tetragrammaton, the letter Dalet, then you find that it's no longer Yod He Vav He, but Yod He Vav Dalet He. And that forms the word Yehuda. So this Yehuda is precisely the tribe that we always address Kabbalistically in order to understand what Yehuda is. Because on top of the cross of the crucified, if you can see above the Star of David, is written Ingri which the Bible translates as Jesus Nazarenus Rex Judeorum. Translated into English means Jesus of Nazareth, King of Judah. I don't say King of the Jews, but kings of, King of Judah, because it's better. From the sense that the tribe of Judah is precisely related to the first triangle and the Ein Sof, or, which is above the first triangle, related with the absolute. The letter He and the letter Dalet, as you can see, at the end of the word Jehuda hides or hide a certain meaning secret related with the light that we have to comprehend and understand. When we talk about the light, it's good, as the Zohar explains, that we put our imagination in the light of a candle. When you see the light of a candle, you see that in the very bottom of the flame, there is always a bluish dark color of the flame. That is that fire, dark fire, which is consuming the candle. It is uh, melting the wax. While the white flame, which is on top, of that, that uh, dark color, it doesn't consume anything, only gives light. So in that flame, we see the symbol of what the Holy Trinity, that we call Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Keter, Chochma, Bina, and that are represented by the first three letters of the Holy Name, yod he bab he are related with a white flame or the white light of the flame, while the dark is represented by the letter he, which is at the very end of the holy name yod he bab he translated always in the Bible as Jehovah, but we translate it as yod hava really. This is what we always address as the Glorian. The Glorian, which is precisely formed by the blue dark light and the light or white flame on top of the dark one. Moses addressed the Israelites 
in the Bible and said, Thy God is a consuming fire. That consuming fire, or quenchable fire, is precisely the dark part of it. Because as you can see in the candle, the dark is consuming, melting the wax. While the white is not consuming anything, it's just giving light. And that light is precisely the trinity that is formed, the three letters of the holy name of God. Indeed, the name of God has only three letters. Because the second, which is He, is repeated as a fourth. But in it, you see the hidden meaning of Lucifer. Sometimes, this letter He is replaced by the letter Dalet. Dalet is the fourth letter of the Hebrew alphabet, which is the letter that we use in order to write that, the mystery of the tree of good and evil. So, in the Gnostic Bible, Master Jesus of Nazareth, Master of Aramento, address, he addresses the three primary forces as the word Yehu. You could say Yehu or Jew, same thing, because relate to Judah, the tribe of Judah. With this, we have to understand that those monads that reach realization of the light within themselves are the monads that, are, that belong to the tribe of Judah. In Kabbalah, we are studying many tribes or hierarchies related with the flame of the Lord. But we have to understand that the highest tribe of all the hierarchy of the, which is represented by the 12 zodiacal signs of the 12 tribes of Israel is precisely the tribe of Judah, which is placed on top. Because those beings, as in the previous lecture was explained, are related with the Dharmakaya, Sambokakaya, Nirmanakaya bodies, and even with the Adikaya bodies that they build related with light, that allow them to dwell within the, within the absolute abstract space. In other words, allow them to dwell within the dark light. That light that consumes us in hell. Now, if you imagine that light, you will say that is, of course, consuming matter of any type in Klipoth, which is called Sheol in Hebrew. That's why when we talk about that, or, or when religions talk that hell, inferno, is a place with fire, we have to understand that is addressing the black fire that consumes, that melts any type of matter. And, of course, the white flame, the white light of the Lord is the one that gives life and rises and transform all the tree of life in each one of us. This is how you have to see, because as you see the red cross behind the tree of life is a Greek cross, the Orthodox cross, and relates precisely to the ten sephiroth. At the very bottom is Malkut, which precisely 
the very base of the cross. But you see that Christ is crucified and has his feet on Yesod, which is the sephira of sex, the sexual force. When somebody is working in the crucifixion of himself with the fire of Lucifer, with the staff of Moses, which is fire and light, they find that the most difficult step on this process is the stigmas or the stigmata on the feet on the cross. You see that the right foot is over the left on the cross. That means that you have to control the left side of the tree of life, which is led with evil, with the right, when you put it on top of the other foot. And that is only possible with a sexual fire. In many lectures, we have stated that Lucifer is related with a sexual potency. Now, the stigmatas related with the hands are not easy, but easier than the ones in the feet, obviously. Because the ones in the hands are related with Gedula and Gebura, which are the two superior aspects of the monad. While in the bottom, in the feet, we find the inferior aspect of that monad, which is called ourselves. And that's why only in the cross you can ask for annihilation, because God is a consuming fire in the bottom, because it relates to the four bodies of sin. If you see the bottom of the cross, the orthodox cross, the last horizontal beam is always unbalanced, crooked. People wonder why the Greeks or the Orthodox make the first horizontal uh, beam of the cross on top very well balanced. Then the big one related with the monad also horizontal very well balanced. But the one in the bottom is crooked. When you know alchemy, when you know Kabbalah, you understand that the most difficult work that we have to perform is with the kidneys. Of course, Hod and Netzach are related with the emotional center, Hod, and with the mind, Netzach. But also these two sephiroth are related with the kidneys, which gives sexual strength to Yesod. And the kidneys in relation with Yesod are related with the cross of St. Andrew, which is an X, in which you have to suffer all the karma in order to annihilate the egos related with lust, Kamaduro and Karma Zaya. And that's why to balance or to make that horizontal crooked line of the Orthodox cross even is the most difficult part of the work of any alchemist. Because here in the bottom, as you see, Hod, Netzah, Yesod, and Malkut is what we call the four bodies of sin in which the ego is very strong. And this is precisely what we, all of us are doing, trying to make that beam even but takes a lot and the last work that the initiate does on the cross is precisely the stigmatas on his feet or her feet when those stigmatas are received in the astral plane in the internal planes the initiate is already balanced you know in the in hor and etzach which is the most difficult part and this is precisely what the Greek cross symbolizes. 
And uh, beneath Markut, of course, is Klipot or, uh, or Sheol. Let us go now into the next graphic where we again go into our own particular nature, psychosomatic nature. On top of the tree of life, you find different uh, Hebrew words related with that light that we are mentioning here. Pe'er is in relation with glory or splendor. Tifereth, as you know always, which is in the middle of the tree of life, is related also with splendor, with glory, with light. Then the, the word hod, which is here, the sephira hod, which relates always the emotional center, is also related with the light, the gl glorious light. And uh, hadar is another Hebrew word for the same, with the same meaning. And zohar at the end. All of those words are synonyms. And are used in the Bible in different ways to specify the different aspects of the light. And that's why each part of us, as we are, of course, uh, physically speaking, we have within the different forces that come from the top of the tree of life and that mix in Malkut. Here we found, uh, or we wrote, in the seven lower sephiroth, the seven uh, fluids related with our organism. Water, which is related with the spirit, or with gedula in, in Kabbalah, related with that water within which the brain and the spinal medulla are floating. We call the cerebrospinal fluid, in which that... Uh, Forces of the spirit are floating in our organism. The wine of Geburah, which is also related with fire. And the blood of Tifereth. Both wine and blood, or fire and blood, are interrelated. In one of the lectures, we told you that Geburah relates to the with the beating of the circulatory system, while Tifereth with the heart that circulates the blood. Both forces are related with what we call the monad. In Etzah we find what the Bible called the milk, which is nothing but the segregation of all the glands that we have in our organism, the endocrine glands. And then we have the immune system, the lympha, related with the dew, related with hod. And then we have the olive oil, which is that fluid related with our semen, or shemen that the Bible call the oil, with which we have to be anointed. And the last fluid is mal uh, honey, related with malkut. All of those fluids are what we call rivers or forces that are mixing in the physical body and giving us different type of energies from the tree of life. That's why the book of Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 7 says, All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. To the source where the rivers flow, there they flow again. So you have to understand that all of these rivers that we are talking here also relate to all the fluids that we have in our organism and that come from the Glorian, which is that light that we are pointing at the ends of or. All of us are connected to that. And here, of course, we have to understand that all of those fluids or forces that enter in our organism are related to what we would call Lucifer. Because all of them carry the light 
in different modalities. That's why the Sohar states, as the light passes from one to the other throne through the various channels between them, it becomes more powerful and stronger in its circulatory course, similar to the blood in the veins of the body. Such is the region on high that gives rise to the seven different colors, which in their totality and blending constitute the great mystery of that unknown something term light. There are also seven other different colored lights which on flowing together and thus becoming blended from one great ocean of light which then streams forth from its seven different outlets. This is of course quoted by Isaiah in the chapter 11 verse 15. He says, In yod shall lay waste the tongue of the sea of Egypt, Mizrahim, and shall lift up his hand over the river in the strength of his spirit, and he shall strike it in the seven rivers, so that men may pass through it in their shoes. Of course, it's talking about those uh, alchemists, that are working always with all of these fluids or rivers which the Master Solomon addresses in Ecclesiastes. The Sohar, the Sohar uh, keeps saying, each of the seven outlets or streams becomes divided and forms into seven reservoirs, and each of these into the source of or fount of seven rivers, and which subdivide again and form seven brooklets, thus forming a vast circulatory system by which the waters of each separate and then meet again and become blended together. When you read this uh, passage of the Zohar, if you do not know about alchemy, you wonder, what is all of this? And when he says, from one to the other throne, through the various channels between them, it becomes more powerful and stronger in its circulatory course. What is that? What throne is the Zohar talking about? When you study alchemy in Kabbalah, you understand that Chesed, the spirit, which is also call, called Gedula, his throne is the cerebrum spinal nervous system, called also central nervous system, the brain and the medulla, all of that is the throne of God, Chesed. That's why also uh, the Zohar states that when Genesis says, and a river came out of Eden and parted into four heads, he says, All of those four heads and the river are related with the Sephira Chesed or Gedula. If you analyze alchemically, of course, you understand that the throne of God is the cerebral and spinal nervous system in our physical body. And when you are united, sexually speaking, with another throne that could be only a woman, because the sexual organ connects the two thrones. The river of Eden is Hesed. And 
The woman also has that river in her cerebral and spinal nervous system. United both, then you understand what the Sohar says. As the light passes from one to the other throne, mean interchanging the sexual act, all the forces of the rivers that the physical body has in both men and women. Because the only channel that can interchange that is the asod, the sexual organ. And of course, all the plexuses, the plexi that we have in the body are interchanging forces. And as the sexual light increases, then of course you find that it becomes more powerful and stronger in its circulatory course, similar to the blood in the veins of the body. It's so obvious that when somebody reads it, just, I don't know, when they put their mind in another thing, but when you know alchemy, when you know the mystery of that, it's easy to see that they're talking about a sexual act. This is the only way to interchange the forces between men and women. And this is precisely what we see here. And of course, as you can see also, we wrote again vanity of vanities, vanity of vanities, the temple is vanity. Because the physical body is the vanity that holds all the vanities, which are the breath also. Because Habel, which is translated as Abel, is also that breath. But the one that is doing all this job or interchanging all this light is Lucifer. Because he is the one that is carrying all of this in our circulatory system, in all the fluids that we have. It's not, as people think, some spirit, individually speaking, but if we said spirit from the point of view, as in English, that a spirit is precisely a fluid that goes everywhere in our organism. And that's why we always state, Lucifer is always tempting people, but they don't know how they are being tempted. And behold, in the book, on the next graphic, we find that beautiful verse quotation of Isaiah chapter 14, between 12 and 15, when he wrote, How art thou fallen from heaven, O glorified son of the dawn? And of course, in other Bible, they translate it as Lucifer, because Lucifer in Latin means carrier of the light. It's the same glorify son of the dawn. How art thou fallen from heaven? Well, we explain how. To the tree of life, from the ends of or does glorify one, because we explain in other lectures, that the first emanation of the absolute, the ends of, is the ends of or, the light. And that light is called in Greek, Christ. And in Latin, Lucifer. That's why the title of this lecture is Christus Lucifer. But of course, in Hebrew, is not Christ, is not Lucifer, because it's Hebrew. And they call it Hillel, which means glorified. Glorified one. It's the light. This myth about the descent, the descent of Lucifer or Christ into the matter is explained in many ways. It's also related with the falling of the angels. But we are not going to address that because then we are going to make a mixture of it. We are going just to address the dissension of this light in the initiate and in us. How art thou cut down to the earth? The earth is our physicality and also the planet earth. 
because that light emerges from the absolute and goes down and gets in the center of any planet, the earth, to dominate the goim. The goim, as we have stated, is related with the egos. Goi, read, read, uh, when you re pronounce it backwards, is ego. Of course, in this day and age, goim are related to Gentiles, people that do not belong to the Hebrew race or the Israelites or Israel that live in the Middle East. Of course, they have that interpretation because people that use that interpretation do not know anything about Kabbalah or alchemy. They think they relate to their own race. As in India, they think that the Brahmins relate to certain sects that follow Brahma Brahmanism. And this is something very different, related to always to the archetypes. And this is precisely what we have to understand. Gnostically speaking, never fall into the mistake of thinking that when the Bible addresses the Goim, they are addressing the Gentiles. People that do not know anything about esotericism, they address the Goim, people that don't belong to the race of Jews. But that is their problem, not our problem. We are here addressing the going, which are the egos. Because only Lucifer can control the ego. Because when Lucifer enters into our own psyche that is filled with lust, pride, anger, vanity, laziness, gluttony, greed, etc., 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 he becomes Satan. He becomes black, like the consuming fire. He is glorified on heaven, but when he enters inside of us, becomes black. And this is precisely what people do not understand. And some people mix Lucifer with Satan. Which are two different things. Lucifer is pure light when he's not mingled with our goim. But when he enters to dominate the goim in any niche, he becomes black. It's dark light. Black, like the charcoal. And that's why Isaiah said, For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of El, which is God. El is the name of God in Chesed. Because the spirit that we have, the monad, above it is yod he bab -He. And Lucifer, or Hillel, comes from that height. He exalted himself there. But when he enters into us, he goes down. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. You know, we talk about the north is above the head. The superior dimensions, the absolute. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Now thou shalt be brought down to Sheol, to the depths of the abyss. Now listen, when you read that in the Bible, that is a sentence that Isaiah, according to what we read there, is addressed to the king of Babylon. You may have said, oh well, the king of Babylon, maybe it was Saddam Hussein there in Iraq, in past lives. No. The king of Babylon is somebody that reached the fifth initiation of mayor mistress and became a malakim, but with the ego very fat. When we enter into this path, we become a melech, which plural is malakim, a king of Babylon. What Babylon? 
our own particular individual Babylon, Babel, in other words. Because really, in the book of Isaiah, it doesn't say Babylon, it said Babel. And Babel is a tower, the spinal nervous system, where the king is seated. But unfortunately, too, too many go in within, many egos. So to that is addressed this sentence. To that initiate the fifth initiation of major mysteries. Because he took the direct path and wants to annihilate all the goyim within. He wants to become an inhabitant of the tribe of Judah to the highest. Because from there is from where Lucifer comes down. Lucifer or Hillel or Christ belongs to that area of the tree, uh, the first Three sephiroth of the tree of life and the absolute. Very purified light that for us is dark because we cannot see it. But it's light for the para Marta satyas. And this is precisely what we have to understand. So when that light suffers and wants to help any initiate and then enters into what? Sheol. And in many lectures, in previous lectures, we explained, we said that Sheol is also the same letters that we use in order to uh, write the name Saul, the first king of Israel. See, the first king of Israel means. The first king that all the archetypes of Israel had when they reached the fifth initiation of their mysteries is Saul, Sheol, hell. So when we understand Kabbalah and alchemy, we understand that Hillel, Christ, or Lucifer, or whatever you want to name it, descends into Sheol, into Saul, because wants to transform him into David. Sheol, or Saul, David, and Solomon are the three processes or transformations that the alchemist passes when enters into the mysteries of the cross. If you read the Bible, you will understand how uh, Saul has always problems with Samuel. Samuel anointed him. Samuel, Shemuel, related with the name. You know, Shem is the name. The name of God, Shemuel, anointed him. And he received the help of Jehovah. Who is this Jehovah? It's Yod He Bab He above. That light that enters in order to help. But because he has the ego very alive, he enters in trouble. And of course becomes an enemy of David, who is the one that kills Goliath. And all the rest of wars that David performed, alchemically speaking. And this is how we have to understand this. But is Lucifer the one that is helping David, or helping also Samuel, and also Solomon? And the, the one that shows how to do it is Moses. With his staff. Because when Moses is working with the staff. And doing all the plagues to the king of Egypt. Or Babylon. Same thing. He's doing with Lucifer. Which is the serpent. The staff. He carries. Because he is working with it. This is how we have to understand this. So. Now thou shalt be brought down to Sheol. To the depths of the abyss. Right. This abyss is us, in other words. This is how we have to understand. And that's why when this Lucifer appears to the initiate, to Saul, appears with a terrible aspect, very scary aspect. Why? Because Saul has the ego very alive. In that beautiful 
Lucifer is now Satan. And that Satan wants to transform that soul into pure gold. And for that he has to tempt him. Because he mingled with it or with him. And he, being pure, now looks impure. And this is why in the book of Job is explained how this Satan is always doing the impossible in order to tempt you because he knows that if you triumph over temptation, he becomes shiny again within you. That is called the resurrection. Let us go into the next graphic. And again, again going to Eden. And explain, according to this graphic, you see, then you find Shiva, which is Bina in Kabbalah. And above it is his wife, which is the river. In Hebrew, river is Naher. And sometimes, in other verses of the Bible, it's called Nachera. When we read the book of the Master Samael on Veor, Igneous Rose, he explains that Nachera is the name of the angel that controlled the fig tree. And that the fig tree relates to the feminine sexual forces. And this is the only way to understand what Naher, the river that comes from Eden, means. It says, And a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from then it was parted and became into four heads. That river is a feminine aspect of the Divine Mother, Bina, that descends from that, as you see there, from heaven. And goes down into Chesed. At the Sohar states, Chesed represents the four rivers of Eden in synthesis. In the other graphic, we're talking about the seven fluids of the physical body. But now we are going to synthesize that in the four rivers of Eden. And it's very easy to understand in that way. Sohar says, Chesed. The spirit relates to the four rivers. Again, when the man and the woman are united sexually, the first river, Pison, relates to the cerebral spinal fluid in the man. And the second river, Gihon, is related with the fluid of his genitalia. But it's connected, you see, to fluids. The cerebral and spinal fluid and the genitalia. This is Pison and Gihon. And the other two rivers, which is precisely the, the river Hedikel and Euphrates, are related with the two polarities in the feminine body. But all of them are related to the cerebral and spinal nervous system and the genitalia. The thing is that the fluid that comes from heaven, that river, control the sexual organs and the spinal column and the brain. In both sexes. So when you see them united in the sexual act, man and woman, and then you see that river that comes out of Eden from heaven and doing that intermingle forces in the sexual act. And the one that is given and taking the fire from heaven, that is stealing the fire from heaven in that sexual act, is called Lucifer. So, unfortunately, people ignore who Lucifer is. And in the very sexual act, all that fire that Prometheus is stealing from heaven, is a spill in the orgasm or spasm. 
and the couple remains in darkness. But if you know how to take advantage of the forces of that river, you know that Bina, the Holy Spirit, is the one that controls the waters, along with Chesed, which is the spirit that floats upon the waters of Genesis. This is how you had to see that river divided in four heads, in the sexual act, in alchemy, in Kabbalah. This is the only way to understand it, because if you put your mind in a very shallow manner, people start thinking that this river is Tigris, Euphrates, there in Asia, and that the Garden of Eden was somehow also in Asia. Eden means voluptuousness, bliss. And that voluptuousness, that bliss is felt in the very sexual act. That is Eden. But remember that in the moment when you are doing that, Lucifer is present. The giver of light. He wants to make of you a shiny being. But you had to overcome temptation. That's why it's written in Yod Chava Elohim, which is Bina Shiva, took Adam and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Okay, from where did Yod Chava Elohim took Adam, who represents the true man, the true human being? He took it. From the rivers, from the four rivers, he took it. Because this is how you have to create inside of you the solar bodies, Christic bodies, electronic bodies, which are pure energy. And this is how you can rise and approach God because. God is a consuming fire down, but not up. That light envelops you when you have solar bodies. And that's why when Moses came down from Sinai, he was shining because he built for himself astral body, mental body, causal body. And he was shining. So that Moses is that Adam that Jehovah Elohim took from the four rivers. And those four rivers are sitting ties and yo, hey, vav, hey, the tetragrammaton. These four rivers are also fire, air, water, and earth. Therefore, elements that we have to control in order to become a human being. As a human being that you see there, worshiping. Jehovah Elohim. Bina is Jehovah Elohim. And of course, the one here is doing the basis of Moses in the Vedic manner. Now, when Lucifer was in Eden before falling, Ezekiel, in the chapter 28, as you see there, with a beautiful graphic of uh, William Blake, he says, Thou art, O Lucifer, sealing up a measurement full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. In Eden, the garden of God, thou hast been every precious stone, thy covering, ruby, topaz, and diamond, beryl, onyx, and, and jasper, sapphire, emerald, and carbuncle, and gold, the workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes in thee, in the day of thy being produced, have been prepared. By the abundance of thy merchandise, they have filled thy mist with violence. And thou dost sin, and I trust thee from the mount of God, and I destroy thee, O covering Kerub, from the mist of the stones of fire. He's addressing Christ. Christus Lucifer. It's 
being so beautiful becomes black in us. That's why when we talk about Lucifer or Christus Lucifer, we feel sad and pain in our heart when we heard fanatics from different religions, different sects of Christianity, sometimes Judaism and Islam, that curse Lucifer. Ignoring that is precisely the Greek sacrifice of the light coming down into you in order to transform us. Let us now go into the other. How Lucifer comes into the initiate when he takes the direct path. We have uh, taken from the Bible and we put there in the next graphic Joseph and the angel Gabriel. This is what you read in Matthew. He says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call him Yeshua, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Yeshua. Knew him not. The tree of knowledge of good and evil is hidden in those verses. When we enter as alchemists into our wife, we meet her not. And the wife meet him not. But only the fornicators meet or know their wives and their wives, their husbands, in the sexual act. That is written in Genesis. When Adam knew Eve, she begot Cain. And he was a killer. The clue would have been Adam knowing her not. In the sexual act. Which means to penetrate her. And not to spill. The river of Eden. To be in Eden. But without polluting the waters of Eden. That's the meaning of that. But when the initiate. Reaches the fifth initiation of mayor mysteries. And he has created astral mental and causal bodies. He's a newborn. He's a new human being. And then, if his inner monad, his inner spirit, takes the direct path, then the angel Gabriel comes, because it's prohibited. Some initiates, like the Dalai Lama, for instance, like Krishnamurti, rest in peace, as a great master, they decided not to take a wife. That is their will. So in this case, Joseph, reaching the fifth initiation, he wants to serve the Lord as a single priest. 
no more wife. But in the end, he discovers that his divine mother in the internal planes is already with child, Mary. It's not Mary in the physical plane, the one that is with child. Alchemically, the one that is with child is Mary, the divine mother of Joseph. It's already with Lucifer. You see, let us apply now the meaning of Lucifer, carrier of the light. She is carrying the light. She's carrying Christ. In other words, she is becoming Lucifer, carrier of the light of Jesus. And he says, don't be afraid of to receive your wife, Mary. Why? In Kabbalah, when you name Yod, Hey, Vav, Hey, you name the letter Hey twice. Why? In my case, for instance, that I am a male, my first Hey, Yod, Hey, is in heaven. It's my divine mother. The second Hey is my wife. And everything that I see my wife doing in relation with the work relates also to my divine mother. And this is something that alchemists should learn. So Mary is the name of Joseph's wife, physically speaking, but Mary is also the name of the husband of the Holy Spirit above. yod Hey, Ava Elohim and Aima Elohim is how you call it in Kabbalah. So Aima Elohim is pregnant because he's virgin, is pure. And then Joseph, the angel says, take your wife because what is coming from her comes from the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is also Mary, the, the divine up there. In other words, keep Practicing sexual magic and purify more yourself with your wife. And don't worry because she is pregnant in the light that will rise now in your bodies that you already have created will be light. The light of Lucifer, the light of Christ will go up in every of your medulas because we have seven medulas. Those seven medulas are the seven horns of the Lamb that the book of Revelation talks about. And because those seven medullas or horns relate to the sexual strength, virility, sexual power, which is Lucifer. That's why the horns are always the symbol of sexual purity in the angels, in the gods. But sexual impurity in the demons. The demons have their horns. As more evil they perform, more they grow. But the horns of Moses, the horns of the Lamb, which are seven, are horns of chastity. And you know, in this day and age, how certain doctors, we will say, of Taoism, utilize the horns of uh, deers, and other animals in order to make certain medicine to give you sexual strength. Because really the horns capture the sexual force in goats, rams, and that is very known by anyone that works in alchemy. And that's why Lucifer is symbolized by a goat because it has a lot of power in the horns and in the sexual organs too. And behold here, Gabriel is precisely the angel that announces that. Let us go into the other graphic in which we find Venus and Mars of the Greek Roman mythology. Here it is written. Remember that Venus represents the Divine Mother. Remember that Venus is the planet that appears before the sun rises. Hmm? And that's why Venus is called carrier of the light. 
it carries the light that will shine after its appearance. And that was Freya, Friday, is holy. Behold, that in Judaism, they celebrate the Friday at the end. Freya, the end of Friday, is precisely the end or the beginning of the Shabbat, which is the force of Venus rising in Saturn, the Shabbat. Saturn is Bina. And of course, the same thing because the witches Sabbath also celebrate that. Taking advantage of the sexual strength, but in the opposite way. There is the Holy Shabbath and the witches Sabbath. And both are celebrated in the same day, Friday night. And Friday is a holiday for the Muslims. And everything relates to the same alchemical meaning that we are given here in relation with Lucifer. So Venus is a carrier of the light. And that's why in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel. But you see how you write Gabriel in Hebrew? Geburail is the angel of Geburah. And the angel of Geburah is Mars, fire. The angel or the fire of Geburah descends to the left side of the tree of life and goes into Yesod. And Yesod is controlled by the moon. And that's why it's called Gabriel. Or the male force of Geburah, in other words. In other words, our moon, which is controlling Sabbath, in either way, receive the forces of Geburah, Mars, the fire, and go there. And this is what is called Gabriel. And that's why we put Mars there. Because he is a warrior. The forces of Samael, of Mars, are the ones that comes to the moon. And remember that Yesod is controlled by Scorpio. And Scorpio is controlled by Mars, by Samael. But a Scorpio related with the Assad is also related with the moon, Gabriel. He says, this Gabriel or Geburael was sent from God unto the city of Galilee, named Nazareth. That is an allusion to the physical body. To a virgin spouse to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David and the virgin name was Mary. Ram Eo. That virgin, I repeat, is inside of all of us. If she reaches that level of the fifth initiation and then is visited by the angel Gabriel. And the angel came in unto her. When you read this, and the angel came in unto her. In other parts of the Bible, it's written that when the psalm, uh, Judah precisely entered into a prostitute and into, into her. The same words. So you say, how is that this angel is entering into her? By alchemy, we understand, enters into her own womb. And places the fire of Lucifer in her womb. But that angel Geburah or Geburael, Gabriel, is beneath Bina in the left side of the tree of life. And that Bina is the Holy Spirit, Jehovah Elohim. And that's why he says, Hail thou that art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled, and he saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, divine mother Kundalini. Thou hast found favor with Jehovah Elohim Bina. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Yeshua, Savior. 
He shall be great and he shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And for, and for his kingdom there shall not be no end. What is the house of Jacob? The house of Jacob is Tifereth. And in there is where Yeshua unites with the human soul. Yosef is the initiate in the physical plane. But Mary, in this case, also can represent a woman in the physical plane that receives internally the Son of God. That Son of God is Lucifer. That Son of God is Christ or the Messiah, in other words. is anointed sexually. But this union is given by the angel from Geburah, the angel Gabriel in Yesod. I mean, there is a chaste union. The divine mother inside of us become pregnant with the Lord. And it's a child inside that unfortunately is going to be born into a sea and ocean of egos. Goim everywhere. Because you know that the first danger that appears is that a Herod wants to kill him. That Herod is your mind. So you have to be careful in order to keep your Lord inside of you in order to, for the Lord to grow. How he grows up? By annihilating the ego. And by rising the serpents of light in each of the seven bodies. That's the Lamb of God. That erases the sins of the world. And that's why you see there. Venus and Mars. The union of Venus. Which is Tifereth. With Mars. Which is Geburah. Gabriel in other words. That union or mixture of forces. Help Jacob. Israel. Or the, all the archetypes. That unfortunately are slaves. Of sin. And that inhabited Egypt. And that at that moment. The king is not called uh, Herod. But Saul. Whether you call it Saul or Herod the king. Is the same thing. Is the king of Babylon. Or Babel. Then said Mary unto the angel. Next graphic. How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? In this case, to the woman, how it shall be? How I want to be with a child when I practice sexual magic? I don't know a man. I am not doing the common sexual act that all women do, that fornicate and reach the orgasm. I am a vestal of the temple, is what she said. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come unto thee. That Holy Ghost is precisely Bina, the Holy Spirit. The third aspect of the first triangle of the tree of life comes to, to her through the same angel. Right? And the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also the holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And this is how the Messiah enters into the initiate. This is how Moses enters and receives the staff of power. The staff which is the same temper. Tempter, I mean. And as you see, the same angel that appears to Mary appears to Joseph. Gebura, which is the sexual strength, the fire. Of Mars. Into your soul. And the whole work. That this. Lucifer. Or Christus Lucifer is going to perform. Is marvelous. Grandiose. Of course. All the goim. All the people inside. Wants to kill the Lord. And that's why in this day and age. All the fornicators. That hypocritical fellow at the dead letter, the Bible, 
they curse Lucifer without or ignoring that without Lucifer or Christus, the crystal force, the sexual force, we cannot perform anything. In the next graphic, that's why we put here another uh, verses of the Bible in order to show you the meaning of the waters and the Spirit of God, which is Chesed, which is transforming the initiate. In the first verse above, we find, And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Understand that the waters that we are talking about here are those waters of Chesed. Because Chesed is water. The cerebral and spinal fluid and also the sexual fluid. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straight out of the water. And lo, the heavens were open unto him. And the, he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. He's addressing, of course, Lucifer, the firstborn of the dawn. This is my beloved son, Lucifer, and I am pleased with him. He's sacrificing himself and entering into this prophet. This prophet is called Averamento, Master Jesus, Yeshua. And of course, that event happened to the Master Jesus, happened to the Master John the Baptist, happened to Moses, happened to Abraham, happened to Mohammed, happened to Buddha, and all the masters that reached that level. And that's why Master Jesus says in John, Jesus answered, Very, very, I said unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, is fornication. And that which is born of the Spirit is a spirit, is chastity. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The Spirit blows where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell whence it comes and where it goes. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. This is something internal. Casting out to do nothing physical. Of course, in the physical plane, the only thing that you see is the physical body of the prophet. That is doing that transformation in himself. And that's why, as you see there, Jesus being baptized by John the Baptist, what in other lecture we explain relates to the Sephira Yesod. John the Baptist, in this case, symbolizes the true man, the true human being who is an alchemist. And Jesus represents Yeshua, the fire of Lucifer descending into him as a savior. And that's why we find in this graphic. This is quoted from Job. Now there happened in that day of the baptism that the Beni Elohim Children of God came to present themselves before Yod Chava, and Satan came also among them. You see, Lucifer was already in Jesus, was already in the initiate, and therefore was no longer Lucifer. He was mingled with the ego, so he was black. He was Satan. And he says, my goodness, this is an initiate or the fifth initiation of mere mysteries. It's in chastity. But there's a lot of ego still. And that's precisely the spirit of the height descends. And John Havah said unto Satan, not unto Lucifer, because he is already mingled, I repeat, with the ego. Where do you come from? Then Satan answered, John Havah, and said, From going to and fro in the earth, in the horizontal part of the beam of the cross 
and from walking up and down from the north to the south, the vertical line of the cross. Because this is where Satan is, where Lucifer is. To and fro, up and down, making the cross. And Yod Havah said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Jesus? For there is no one like him on the earth, a man without sin and upright, fearing Elohim and keeping himself far from evil. Then Satan answered to Yod Havah, Bina, and said, Does Jesus fear Elohim for nothing? Have you not made a fence around him and around his house and around all that he has? Of every side, you have blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thy hand now, and touch all that he has, and he will curse thee to thy face. And Yodhava said unto Satan, Behold, all that Jesus has is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thy hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of Yodhava, to Job, to Jesus, to Moses, to Buddha, to any initiate that reaches that level. And now let us read Mark 1st, 12, 13. And immediately the Spirit drives him to the wilderness, and he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tempted of Satan, and was with the wild beast, and the angel ministered unto him. Look what the Bible says. After the baptism, after all this transformation, the Spirit takes him. Hmm? They said, okay, do your work. This individual wants to become a Jew. Uh, initiate from the tribe of Judah, the highest level of the tree of life. So tempt him. Show him his defects and vices. Until he destroys all of them within 40 days. If I said that the Israelites were 40 years in the wilderness, it's the same thing. If I said that the Ark of Noah was 40 days out in the universe of life, it's the same meaning. It's the letter Mem, the meaning of the waters, because Lucifer is going to tempt him, as you see there. Lucifer is appearing as the angel of Geburah in that uh, beautiful painting of this uh, uh, painter. So, Lucifer is the light, is a tempter, Satan, that he is working in the initiate. And that's why you see a mixture of light and darkness within any initiate that still is in process of being purified. And that is written in the Bible, is written in the Quran, is written in other books, sacred books of India. Even in the Popol Vuh. But with other ways. All with the same archetypes and the same meaning. Behold here. And as the people were in expectation, and all men mused in their hearts of John, whether he were the Christ or not. Who is John? The true man with the seven bodies. Yehuames. Seven vowels. That's the true man. Is he the Christ? No. He is the one that made Christ Satan. Christ is pure and came down into her and to him. And now he's Satan, he's black. John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I comes, the lashet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Whose fan is in his hand, and he will truly perch his floor, and will gather the wheat into his garner. But the shaft he will burn with fire unquenchable. 
that is addressed, the initiate. This is, you are the initiate, are you Christ? And then the initiate says, as Matthew Samael said one time, I am not going to say that I am Christ, he said, that will be a blasphemy against my Savior. But I am telling you, he is within me. And he is saving me. And he is showing me my defects. His Prometheus, Lucifer, Christ, or whatever you want to call it, he sacrifices himself. And he's crucified in me for my own good. And he's fire. And this is how we understand the Ra and the X in the tree of life. Now the whole work that is performed is performed by Lucifer. Christus Lucifer. In the Gnostic Bible, we find this beautiful part oh, that the Master also wrote in the Parsifal Unveil, when he says, Then Jesus, the divine grace Gnostic priest, chanted a delightful song of praise in the great name. And Jesus said unto his disciples, Draw near unto me. And they drew near unto him. How do you draw near unto the Lord? By practicing sexual magic. Because he is the power in the sexual force. He is the savior. And Jesus exclaimed unto them. Oh, I mean. Then he turned himself toward the four corners of the world. North, south, east, west. The cross. Yod, he, vav, he. The four elements. And he extended his quiet look and uttered the profoundly sacred name, Jehu. The Holy Trinity and the tree of life, the first triangle. He blessed them and breathed into their eyes. And Jesus exclaimed unto them, Look above, now ye are clairvoyant. Then they raised their eyes to where Jesus was pointing and saw a great exceedingly mighty light which no human being in the world can describe. He blew or he breathed into their eyes. What eyes? Pineal gland, pituitary gland, the two eyes inside. Which are connected to the physical sight, the two eyes that we have in our face. He says, look above. How do you look above? Well, when you look above, you make your eyes, how do you call Cross eyes. And you are looking here. The clairvoyant eye here. You see, look above. And when you look above, and then your third eye is all walking, it's awakening. You see? You know that the people think that when you read that, and they're looking at it in the clouds, and The clouds, there is nothing. It's just clouds. You know? But above here in your head is a triangle. Keter Chokma Vina. Related with your brain. And you look above there. Then now you are clairvoyant. Because he blew the fire up there. You understand that? It's easy to see when you know alchemy. And then the great priest Jesus said unto them. Look away out of that mighty light and look towards the other side. Then they saw a mighty fire, water, wine, and blood. What is the other side? If I'm looking up to my brain, the other side of my brain is the opposite. It's down here in my physicality, on my inner bodies. And then I see, when I say fire, water, wine, and blood, related to the monad. And below that is Yesod. And then Jesus proceeded and said unto his disciples, And then I said unto you, I have brought nothing into the world when I came, save the fire, the water, the wine, and the blood of redemption from the monad. Because he entered, when he enters, he enters and mingles with the monad, which is related with those elements. Fire, water, wine, and blood. And from there he enters 
into our physicality. He says, I have brought the fire and the water out of the region of the light of lights. From there where the treasury of the light is found. The ends of all. Because Christ, Lucifer, descends from that height into us. And I have brought the wine and the blood out of the vision of Barbello. And after a little while, the Father sent me the Holy Spirit in the form of a white dove. But hear me, the fire, the water, and the wine are for the purification and forgiveness of sins. When you mix them in your sexual act, in your alchemical work, and then you ask for the annihilation of that wax that you have within. Because the black aspect of the flame will melt your ego. And make all of yourself pure light. And that's precisely the work that Lucifer or Christus Lucifer does. It was really a bad thing that the Catholic Church did in the Middle Ages. Because they were celibate. They didn't understand the alchemical work. So they were reading everything literally, and they just said, oh, Lucifer is a bad thing. And now everybody points at Lucifer as a bad thing. Not even Satan is bad when he is working in the initiate, because he wants to become bright again, very bright. He wants to glow inside of us. But if we continue with the ego alive, he will be black. And that's precisely the great sacrifice of Prometheus. Look there from the Greek-Roman mythology. Prometheus is the same Lucifer. Master Samael said, Those who dare to curse Lucifer pronounce themselves again the cosmic reflection of the Logos. They anathematize the living manifested God in matter and abhor the ever incomprehensible, incomprehensible wisdom when revealing against the contraries of light and darkness, against continence and resemblance, similitude, sun and shadow, day and night, the law of the contraries. The devil or Satan, the reflection of our interior logoi, was the more sublime creature before we fell into animal generation. All of the masters of the hermetic art repeat unto us, whitewash the brass and burn your books. One who whitewashes the devil, turning into its resplendent and primogenitary state, one who dies in oneself here and now, liberates the chain Prometheus. Thus, Lucifer Prometheus pays the individual with abundance because he is a colossus with power of the heavens, the earth, and the infernos. Lucifer Prometheus, radically integrated with all of the parts of our being, makes of us something distinct, a different, an exotic creature, an archangel, a terrific and divine power. Of course, Master Samael in Mexico, many times he said, I need to watch wash the brass and burn my books. Everyone that understood the alchemical aspect of this, he was referring to this statement, of course. Other people, ignoramuses, that do not understand Kabbalah and alchemy, we're trying to burn the books of the master physically. Well, the master doesn't like his books that he wrote. He said that he has to burn them. And only this and that book has to be read. But the other, no. Let us burn them. And they were preaching that. And then we see that these people are ignorant. Taking literally what the master said many times, alchemically speaking. To burn your books means... To burn all the garbage that you have in your mind. All that garbage that we gather through centuries. In this life. In past lives. When you go and meditate. And you want to quiet your mind. You see. How am I going to quiet my mind. With have too many books. How many books do we have in our mind. We have a library. And garbage. 
That's why Buddha says, when you meditate and you see Buddha, take Buddha away. Burn Buddha. You don't have to have any idols. You don't have to worship any idols. People also, when they hear that, they say, oh, I don't worship any, any gods carved by other religions. I only worship Jehovah, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And knowing that the chemical statement of you shall not worship idols is inside. There are many people that don't have any pictures of any deities in their home of other religions. But inside they have hundreds of idols that they worship. And if you don't believe me, look, American Idol. And you will understand. Okay, do you have questions? Yeah. Which I always took to understand as the nervous system, like a ner- two nervous systems on either side of the offering. Yeah. And with the lay loaves in accordance to the number of disciples that were present, which I always took to mean that being present, like in, in terms of psychologically being self aware. The bread to receive the bread of life, yeah, of course. So, that's a good that good comprehension of the statement of Jesus. Because physically speaking, gnostically speaking, we perform that sacrifice, right, of the Eucharist, which in many lectures we explain is necessary. But when we read that with the eyes of the Spirit, we understand the two branches, or bring me branches of wine. It's, I mean, the two forces of men and woman together. And he put the sacrifice on the altar. What altar? The altar of Yesod is where he put the sacrifice. And a cup of water in front of the cup of wine. And this is so obvious there that he's talking about the transmutation of water into wine, you see, in the sexual act. That's why the transmutation of water into wine was performed in the weddings of Cana in the, in the Bible. But this is not a chemical statement that we have to understand. We have to see always the two aspects of everything in order to comprehend. And of course, uh, when you read the Pistis Sophia, it's beautiful. It's an alchemical, Kabbalistic book. And you need to meditate a lot in order to understand it. Not to read it just literally. And to comprehend, you know. Because when the Master says, he pronounced the profound second name, Jehu. Of course, it's yod he vav You can say also say Jew. But he's not talking about the Jews in this day and age. He's talking about that mantra that connects us to the Trinity and to the ends of all. That's Jew or Judah, in other words. That's why in the Sahara states, when a person, an alchemist, is not working with a sexual fire, it's impure. Therefore, is always addressed at the letter D, Dalet. This letter Dalet, which encompasses the four, because Dalet is four, I mean four, right? The tetragrammaton. Meaning that he's not working with the tetragrammaton. And that's the Dalet. But when he learns the mystery of Dalet, which is that, and then that Dalet transforms into He. And that He is precisely the insof. And this is how you are working with yod hey vav hey when you are in chastity. But if you fornicate, as many Kabbalists fornicate only once a week, it doesn't work. Right? Because they just gather on Friday and Saturday, and they uh, have their women, and they use their woman as anyone in other race. A true Jew transmutes and enters into into the flame of the Lord, the white flame, because he takes the black part of the flame of his candle, sexual organs, and that white flame rises the spinal column. And that's a true Jew, but it's a process. The goal is to enter the tribe of Judah, which is the absolute, and to become a Paramartha Satya. That's a very high level of 
to be a Jew, alchemically speaking. As you see, the Divine Mother, she carries Jesus in her womb. So she carries the light. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. So he is light. And the Divine Mother carries that light in her womb. So the Divine Mother is Lucifer, carrying the light. In other words, is part of the same light. When we talk about Lucifer, we talk about the Divine Mother, the Father, and the Son. That's the Holy Trinity incarnated in the initiate that's Lucifer and also Satan could someone's time in life be cut short in order to preserve what they have done in life I don't understand say it again could someone's time in life be cut short I mean die yeah, in order to preserve what they have done well in other words, can somebody that is working in the great work all of a sudden dies? He can take, retain that? Of course. Also retain. I've been talking about this type of work. The case of, for instance, this great initiate, Tutankhamun, that his body was, can you call, disaggregated? Disaggregated, unfortunately, by the scientists. But he was a great initiate that self-realized himself at a very young age. Why? Because in previous lives, he performed and left the work undone. I mean, he didn't finish. And he finished the work when he was a, a pharaoh. Of course, because sometimes in the past, you suffer certain sicknesses, certain ordeals in relation with your karma. And Lucifer, Christ, Satan, Christus Lucifer is always dealing with that, with your karma, with the laws of karma. Or as he says in Job, he goes up and says, how do you see my son now? Well, I can go down, down there and clean it more, but those egos that he has to annihilate are related with karma Zaya and karma duro. He might die. And that's why the Lord says in the first chapter of Job, he says, just keep him alive. He is in your power, but don't put those sicknesses in him because, you know, but in the second chapter, he goes and put a sickness on him. And this is a process that so many angels don't, cannot endure and, and die. So they return, but they are very awakened. For those type of initiatives, uh, it's no big deal. They return and keep doing his work. Like, for instance, Krishnamurti, he returned and kept his work, but he didn't take wife. Why? It's his business. But he need the woman, but he didn't take it in this life because he thought, I can teach what I had to teach without uh, practicing alchemy because I'm already awakened. Dalai Lama is doing the same thing. But uh, we need to do it. It's another Well, that's a good question. What is the difference between Christ as Ains of Or, as Chokhmah, and as... What? Well, it's the same thing. Lucifer is the same thing. But uh, Lucifer in the Ains of Or is clean and glowing and every Paramartha Satya, inhabitant of the Absolute, every Jew from the tribe of Judah at that level has Lucifer shining. There we find Moses in the Glorian. Remember that the Glorian and Isaiah says, glorified, glorified son of the dawn. And Glorian is the, the Glorian is the one that glorify anyone. He's the same Lucifer. So Jesus, Moses, Mohammed belong to the tribe of Judah. And all those initials that reach that level. And their Lucifer is pure. Chokhmah is the Christ or that type of Lucifer that descends in order to help the initiate. 
In Chokma, all the light of Lucifer of every initiate makes one light. And depends on what initiate is working that light in that particular time, that cosmic Christ descends through Chokma into Bina and is Gabriel. And Gabriel is the one that deposits that child into the womb of the Divine Mother. And that Christ within the womb of the Divine Mother is pure, beautiful in heaven. But that Christ has, has to descend inside of the initiate. And when he descends into the initiate and reaches the physical body, which in this case we will call it Bethlehem, and then becomes Satan. And that Lucifer looks around and see lust, anger, pride, vanity. And above in the head of that initiate, he sees Herod that wants to kill him. Etc., etc., etc. So that's the difference. As long as the initiate has the equal life, that Lucifer is Satan. That's why sometimes when that Lucifer is completely pure and then expresses himself through the initiate. And that's what happened with the Master Samael in the last years of his life. His Lucifer was pronouncing himself through him as a tempter too. And sometimes the, the angel, the Logos, was pronouncing himself through him. And sometimes only John, which in this case was the Bodhisattva. I remember one time when if Lucifer is tempting the initiate to purify him, anyone that approaches that initiate at that level has to be aware that maybe Lucifer is going to talk through him and tempt him, him, test him, him. There were many that were testing him. And they didn't notice that because they were asleep. Oh, the Master Samael told me this and this and that. Yeah. Was the Master Samael or was his tempter that was working with him in order to purify him? Who was the one that talked to him? I remember one time I heard from this initiate that said, Master Samael on the Lord told me in front of my wife that I can practice sexual magic one, two, three, four, five, and many times as I want if I annihilate the ego. And then I said, what you are telling me is black magic. Master Samael explained very well in his books that you have to practice only one time a day. But the Master Samael told me that in front of my wife. I said, okay. If that's the case, I want to address the Master. So when we were together and I other the Master Samael, I said, certain individual told me that I can practice sexual magic as many times during the day if it's for the annihilation of the ego. And then the Master Samael, because it was in front of many people, who was the Master Samael, he said, that brother is black magic. Thank you very much, Master. I just wanted to know. So let us kill it there. No, 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 no. We don't kill there. What you are telling me, he said, that he, he said that in front of many people. Yes. Well, you have to tell me the name of that instructor because he's going to spread black magic. And I said, well, happens that the instructor was seated at his left side at that moment. I said, well, he's the man that is seated there at your left side at this very moment. And he said, What? And then he said to the master, you told me that, master, remember that. And the master closed his eyes and says, okay, now in the name of the father of all the lights, I tell you that only one time you can work. And who was the one that said that then before? He said that. I'm telling you, what's Lucifer? He's on Satan. And I said that because he told me many things, also tempting me many times. And I said, okay, I had to meditate in this and inquire. Because to be close to a master of that level, 
Sometimes read the, the book of uh, uh, Gerda called Faust. The doctor Faust, he says, I had to go and do the things, many things at this moment. And then uh, Mephistopheles says, don't worry, go away. I will take care of your students. And when the students enter, they think that he is Faust. Why? Because he's inside the body. The initiate leaves the body and take care of many things outside the body. But the body can be taken by his own Lucifer and said, okay, he comes a new student of this master. We'll always see how he is. If he's a stupid or wise. And he starts playing with him. So that's why I said, not all the things that the master Samael said through his mouth was pronounced by his own logos. Sometimes by his own Lucifer. And I said that because he tests me many times. But one needs to analyze everything that you heard. Otherwise, we, after that, we are repeating, repeating things and committing many mistakes and paying karma. Because in this path, we have to be careful. Is there more questions here? No more questions? Yeah. Assuming that that doesn't mean that she she started fornicating once Jesus was born, does that mean that she stopped the sexual alchemy? No, no, no. It means that the divine mother in the higher planes takes the seed of the Holy Spirit through Geburah, Gabriel, which is the male, because Gabriel means the male, and that baby boy, God boy, grows up and he delivers that uh, baby Jesus of Savior, and that baby Jesus goes down from that level of that to the physical body. And then when he enters into the physical body, and then Joseph says, now take your wife until he's born. He, he needs to, to practice, you know, because we are talking about the birth of Christ, the Savior, is internally. That birth is not physical. It's internal. It's called the initiation of Tifereth. And then that boy, that uh, baby boy, or I mean the God child, enters into Tifereth, and Tifereth becomes the child of the child. And then goes down even to Malkut. And then in Malkut, when Malkut receives it, which is Mary, the wife of Joseph, and then they said, okay, now you have the boy there. Keep it in secrecy. Go to Egypt. Don't be big mouth. Because a Herald can kill it. You know that. But that's a chemical process. From internal planes to the physical plane. This is how we have to understand it. No more questions? Thank you very much. The presentation of this lecture was made possible by donations from listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most Gnostic schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every single donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticRadio.org. For questions and deeper understanding of this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Glorian Publishing and available from booksellers worldwide. Visit GnosticBooks.org to learn more. Thank you. May all beings be happy.